Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Dieter, and today we're going to be building a spark gap transmitter. Invented in 1896, it was one of the first forms of wireless communication. And it's pretty simple, but it's pretty interesting. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, so first of all, we're going to need some parts. You're going to need some form of board to build it on. You're going to need a few nails or screws. One of them can be short, two of them need to be kind of long. You'll see where they go later. You're gonna need some small wire and you're gonna need the lid of a can or just a metal, a piece of metal strip. And you also need a wooden block. Once this is finished, it'll end up looking similar to this and you can see where all the parts go. So we'll start building. The first part is you need to determine where this block is going to go. If you see here, the can lid rests on top of the block and it needs to go at the end so there's room for these two nails. So we can put the block here and the can lid there one nail will go there and one nail will go in the middle. That looks pretty well centered. So get some wood glue or any other glue that is capable of binding to wood, like Gorilla Glue, and put down some glue. Uh, a little extra just in case. Okay, maybe a little too much. And then, we're gonna clamp it in place so that it doesn't go anywhere. We need to let this dry, but while we're letting it dry, there's some things we can get it started on. First of all, you're gonna to need to punch a hole in the lid of the can. I already did that, it's pretty simple. Just put this down, put this, put like a, a screw or nail here and smack it with something heavy. Uh, don't do it on your nice table that you just built or else you'll get little divots. While you're waiting for the glue to dry, you can also begin to sand off the coating on your screws. This is so it makes a good electrical contact with anything it touches. On your longest screw, you're also going to want to make sure that you sand off some on the bottom here because that's where it'll come into contact with the, uh, with the lid. You'll also want to start sanding off on the edges of the lid so that it can make a good contact with the bottom of the screw.
Also, sand a little off right around the hole and you'll see why that's useful later. Okay, the next step is we want to make an electromagnet. To do that, we just need to take a lot of wire and wrap it around this metal nail or screw. But we do want a lot of wire. So I got this yardstick and we're gonna wanna measure out 10 yards of wire. If you don't have a yardstick or enough wire, that's okay, it doesn't need to be this much. But the more the merrier. So let's start going. Okay, so now that you have your 10 yards of wire, you can snip it off and wind it all around this nail, screw, whatever. It's a good idea to leave a good amount extra on each end so that you can connect everything you need to connect. It's also a good idea to start decently low, somewhere around here, because you won't need to drill this too far into the uh, wood. And this is kind of boring, but you just gotta wind all the wire around this. Try to keep it all the wire being wrapped all in the same direction. Don't start wrapping this way. You'd be unwrapping first of all, and that's not good. But if you manage somehow to get them to overlap going different directions, that messes with the field, the electromagnetic field. But you can overlap like this and then like this. That's okay. Just keep wrapping. At some point you may encounter that your wire makes a kink like this. Do your best to try to take out the kink before you continue using the wire. It's not the best for the electromagnetic field, but if one or two get in there, it's not a problem. All right, we're almost at the end here of our windings. And once again, try to leave some of it not fully wound so that you can connect it to other parts of the project. To secure it nicely, you can pull it out a little bit farther, put your finger down, and slide it underneath, making a little bit of a knot. It looks like a cocoon of wire. I'd assume you probably don't need to use 10 whole yards, but it's always good to be safe. And now you know you've got one great electromagnet. You can test it by taking a battery. This is the same battery we'll be using. And another magnetic thing. Now you know, you've got one good electromagnet. All right, the glue is almost done drying. So there's one last thing we can do 
to be prepared for when it's done drying. And that's we can take our sandpaper and try to get as much of the coating off of the ends of these wires as possible. We want to be make sure everything in this telegraph connects very nicely so that it works perfectly the first time instead of us trying to take it apart and see what didn't work. That's always a pain. This part of the wire is called the lead of the wire. It's where you connect everything. And throughout this project, like I said before, we want to make sure all of our leads are devoid of all of the metal coating, like this red metal, only with the copper kind of gold colored metal underneath. That way it makes the best possible connection. All right, now that the glue is done drying, we can move on to the next steps. First, we need to find where all the screws are going to go. The electromagnet screw needs to go right underneath the lid. So we can mark where we want to put that. And this screw is going to go at the end of the can, so we can mark right there. You want them kind of close, but not touching, so that only the very lip of the screw touches the very lip of the can lid, kind of like this. Now that we've marked everything, we're going to want to drill holes. You can just drill uh, screw the screws in like this, but if you have a small board or an old board, the wood might splinter. So it's best to drill some pilot holes first. Okay, I drilled the holes off camera, and the next step is to begin assembling our radio transmitter. So take the electromagnet screw and screw it into this hole. Try to make sure all the wire is kept tight. It might be kind of difficult, but that's okay. This screw, you're only going to want to drill in until it's slightly below the can lid. We can always adjust its height later, so don't worry if it's not perfect. The next step is to screw on the lid. We're going to want to put it here and connect one of the wires from the electromagnet screw to the place where we uh, sanded off some of the coating. Take the end of the wire and wrap it around the screw and then make sure it's, and then once you finish tightening it, make sure everything is touching one another. That way, you know you have a solid connection. So now that the lid is attached, I can show you 
how you can change the height of this screw. It's pretty simple. Just rotate the lid out of the way. Make sure you don't rotate it this way or else you'll probably break this wire. That's why you might have noticed a few continuity errors in this video. The next step is to put in this screw. Like I said, make sure it's really well sanded so that it makes a good electrical connection. You want to screw this one in just until it begins to touch the lid, the can lid. So now we've done almost everything else and it's time for the final step. What, we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a small piece of extra wire and make sure to sand off all the ends. Once you're done with that, wrap the end around the screw and I find the best way to keep it up there is to hook it into the place where the screwdriver goes. That way it never falls down. Now you have a completed radio transmitter. Let's test it out. Okay, so to test your radio transmitter, just take the leads and put them on the leads of a nine volt battery. If it makes that vibrating sound, you know it works. If yours isn't working, there are a few things you can do to try to fix it. The first is always make sure your leads are well sanded and have no red metal left on them. Another is to make sure your electromagnet is still pretty close to the lid. Third, make sure this wire is well attached to the sanded off part of the lid. This is the one I needed to do to make mine work well. The radio transmitter was initially used by ships and by the military to send Morse code over vast distances. A Morse code signal you might be familiar with is this. SOS. Here's another one. I'll let you try to figure out what that means. Now that you've built your own radio transmitter, it's good to know how it works. This radio transmitter uses the sparks created between the gap, hence the name spark gap transmitter, to make radio frequency signals, which can be picked up on a radio. We'll try that out soon. Electronically, what is happening is quite simple. Once you add the battery, it makes a loop of electricity. But because you have this electromagnet, as the electricity goes through, it comes to the electromagnet, creating a magnetic force. This pulls down the lid, breaking the contact here, stopping the electrical flow, turning off the electromagnet, letting the can come back up to touch. This is what causes the vibration and what allows you to make long sparks and short sparks, which make up Morse code. Now we'll get a radio and try to listen to it on the radio. So I brought this radio and tuned it to a random AM station. Now let's try it out.
Pretty cool, right? Now that you've built your own spark gap transmitter, there are a few more things you'll probably want to build. One is your own radio, and another is a telegraph key. This just takes the place of pressing together these two wires and makes it much easier and more fun to transmit Morse code. Subscribe so that you don't miss these two videos. Thanks for watching.